The battle over Obamacare has gotten so dirty that yesterday the Democrats leaked embarrassing emails showing how Republican House Speaker John Boehner hid his efforts to protect the long-standing health care subsidies for members of Congress and their staffers. If this doesn't make everybody who is on the fence, and I don't know anybody who is on the fence, if you are on the fence about John Boehner and his cronies, his buddies in the GOP, everybody is talking about how the GOP is eating itself. Good, good. You need to run people like John Boehner and Lindsey Graham out of the party. They need to be on the steps of the Capitol saying, "Uh, I didn't leave the Republican Party, they left me. Yes, we're going to leave all the crooks and the criminals and the liars behind. This is going to this is going to outrage you. Yesterday, uh, they released the Democrats released a letter from John Boehner's office to make sure that um, uh, they kept their exempt status. Emails from February and July showed how Boehner and Harry Reid lobbied the president to save the subsidies, setting up a secret meeting so that Boehner's office wasn't known for doing this. Listen to this. This is a quote. These are quotes from Boehner's chief of staff to Harry Reid's uh, chief of staff. We can't let it get out there that this is for Boehner and Reed to ask the president to carve out the requirement of Obamacare. This is according to Boehner's chief of staff, Mike Summers. He wrote to uh, Harry Reid's top aide on July 17th. We can't let it get out there that we're going over to the president to lobby him to carve out a special exemption for those of us in Congress. This is a little bit uh, difficult because it isn't a a routing meeting because Nancy Pelosi and Mitch McConnell will not be there. Quote, I am even okay if it is the president just hauling us down to talk about the next steps on immigration. I really don't care what they say it's about. It just can't be what we know it's about. This is John Boehner. This is your Speaker of the House. This is your politician that you elected. This is exactly what we've been saying they're doing. They are making special deals behind closed doors. They are one part and parcel with the Democratic Party. They are in bed with them. And they're lying to you. Boehner and Reed were successful in overturning the government ruling, saying that um, by joining the exchanges, they would lose federal subsidies worth an estimated 5000 to 12000 per recipient per year. Is there not a reason? I mean, help me out. Tell me why you are still for the Republican Party. Now, here's what people will say to me. Well, Glenn... We don't want a third-party system. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And here's how it works. You get the people like Boehner, and you get the people like John McCain to leave the Republican Party, and they become independents or Democrats. I'm telling you, we're not going to be the third party unless the third party is more um, along the lines of the Whig Party. If they want to stay in the Republican Party, that's fine. If this is who the Republicans choose to be, that's fine. But I have nothing to do with you. I'll have absolutely nothing to do with you. And if you've ever given a dime to the Republican Party, you need to call them up and say, I'm not giving you another cent. When the millionaires and the billionaires and the people that really count, unfortunately, in this particular uh, situation, I'm sorry, but they don't care about the people who give them $10. There's a lot of individual politicians that do. There's a lot of individual charities that do. I know, I know we have, we do not raise our money. Do you know that in the last year, Mercury One raised $14 million? $14 million. Do you know 
how much of that has come from giant million-dollar donations? Zero. Zero. That is all from people who are just like you. There is a different way to raise money, and it is just to go to the people and say, look, I will do what I say. I am who I am. And you may not like everything, you may not, whatever, but this is what we're going to do, and I will stay the course. And that's what we need to start looking at. But the Republicans, the Republicans, they only care about the million, millionaires and billionaires. And the millionaires and billionaires, many times, not always, many times only care about their bottom line. What do I get in return for this investment? You get nothing. Maybe a country. You get nothing. For those of you who happen to believe and you've given $10 or a million dollars to the Republican Party. You need to call them up today with this story and say, this is an outrage. John Boehner should step down. I've never seen, and there's no way out of this. There's no way out of this. John Boehner knew exactly what he was doing. John Boehner, while his signature is not on this, his his chief of staff is going to be the one, if people even care... His chief of staff is going to be the one that takes the fall for it. But it's not the chief of staff. It's John Boehner. The Republican Party needs to go the way of the Whig Party. I don't care what you call it. I don't care if it's still the Republican Party. I don't don't care. I really don't care. But they're dead to me. They are done. Not another dime to these guys. Now, individual politicians, you bet. But here's how you do it. You go find people like Louis Gohmert. Louis Gohmert, there is no reason why we have somebody like John Cornyn. There is no reason why we have him in Texas. None. These weasel Republican liars. It needs to be, this next election needs to be the last election. For these kind of people... They all need to be kicked out. If they're not standing up and fighting the good fight now, even against all odds and saying we can't win, I don't really care. Do you know how many, you know how many Americans feel that way? We can't win. How many Americans right now, how many people who are running small businesses think to themselves we can't win? You know, I was just, I was just walking down the hallway and I saw our chief accountant, our chief, you know, I don't even know what he's, chief financial officer. And uh, I said, he said, how are you? And I said, I don't know. How am I? And he said, well, you've been better. Starting on our own network, taking, taking our show off and putting it online, hiring all of these great people. We have now Lori Dew doing the news. She was, she was the chief anchor at Fox. We have all these things going on. It, really? Really? Can we win? I have no idea. I get up every day and something inside of me says you're never going to win. And I know exactly what that something is. I don't care. I'm fighting on. If we don't have politicians who get up every day and say, you know, you can't win. Yeah, I know. I know. And I know exactly who's telling me that. I don't care. I'm fighting the good fight. I'm moving forward. I'm not relinquishing my sword. I'm not putting it down. I'm fighting on. Till my last breath, I'm fighting on. If you have a bunch of those people, if you put Louis Gohmert and maybe one other person, you got that weasel Lindsey Graham out of office, and you take Texas, and now you have the two great senators from Texas, and you replace Lindsey Graham, do you know what a force you have? Let me let me play some audio from the absolutely psychotic schizophrenic. Chris Matthews. Here's Chris Matthews, who who was saying just recently that Ted Cruz is. Didn't he compare him to Hitler? Uh, yes. To he Nazis, can, to Hitler, to Father Coughlin. Uh, he was a terrorist. Yeah. He's all those. horrible, horrible. <laughs> and he's going to be the death of the Republicans and everything else. Yep. Here's the latest from Chris Matthews, who must. I'm, t- I'm telling you, MSNBC. I don't know. Maybe maybe you can't get it anymore because you're all on Obamacare. 
but somebody sent him a bag full of lithium because the guy is schizophrenic. Listen to what he now says about Ted Cruz. I think Ted Cruz is brilliant. I think he, the president has met his match in this guy. He set this thing up months ago with no budget agreement, therefore no appropriations, therefore the government would be completely exposed this morning at midnight mm-hmm. last night to go to completely shut down. So he knows what he's doing. Excuse me? I thought he was a terrorist. I thought he was a guy who had no plan. Yeah, here's what he said a little while ago. I've compared him to McCarthy. Maybe that's just a lookalike. I shouldn't get into what people look like. But he doesn't remind me so much when I look him interrogating a witness on the Hill. He looks like Joe McCarthy. He just acts that way with that somber, indictive aspect, like this guy's the evil one. But I will say he's a terrorist because what the guy has done basically says my goals are to is demolition, blow up health care, blow up the the, uh, continuing resolution, bring the government to a standstill, and then make us forfeit on the national. Sorry. Let me let me tell you something. First of all, do not accept this lie that the government is at a standstill. Seventy five percent of all government employees are still going to work. Seventy five percent. It is akin for me saying, you know what? I have to shut this business down. Well, we're still going to do the radio show. We're still going to do all the television shows. Still going to be online. We're still going to be online. We're going to keep all of the reporters in. But the art department is not coming in for a couple of days. That's not a shutdown. <laughs> 75 percent, 75 percent of all government employees are still going in every day. This is an out and out lie. It is propaganda and a lie. But let's not worry right now about the lie of uh, of the government shutdown. Let's let's concentrate on us for a second. I would sure like you to call Louis Gohmert's office and tell him we'll support you, Louis. Right now, what's his name uh, in um, uh, Cornyn in Texas? Has $7 million in his war chest. And I'm telling you, he'd have the Republican Party. They will, they will funny, funnel money into him for, till the day is done. He's the, the leader of the reelection <clears throat> yeah. committee in the Senate. So he will He's they have will a ton do, of money. A ton of money, nonstop money. But I would rather have somebody like Louis Gohmert, who I know I can trust, who is not knifing us in the back. John Boehner. Hey, play that. Do you happen to have the audio of John Boehner when he when he he fought it the whole time? And when finally they send the rev- resolution over saying we're not going to fund it, he gives this giant speech. Do you have that? I don't think so. Oh, you got to get it. It drives me out of my mind. I saw this guy and I thought, you are such a fraud. But that's before I knew this. Let me read the words again. And you call John Boehner's office and you tell them, step down. If the Republicans cannot clean up their own lying, thieving politicians, the Republicans should not have your support. If the Republicans cannot get rid of John Boehner over this, again, a letter to Harry Reid's office that was not supposed to come out. So this is inner office and politician talk back and forth to each other. And it's not supposed to get out, but because the Republicans, there is no honor uh, beyond, uh, between thieves, because the Democrats were mad at John Boehner's office and everything that was going on, Reid's office decided to take it out. Good. Good. Thank you, Harry Reid. It's the first right thing you have done possibly in five years. A letter between Harry Reid's chief of staff and John Boehner's chief of staff trying to set up a meeting with Harry Reid and John Boehner at the White House so they could lobby the president to cut them a special deal. Quote, We can't, this is John Boehner's chief of staff, we can't let it get out there that this is for Boehner and Reid to ask the president to carve out the requirement for Obamacare. This is really difficult, but I'm even okay if it's just the president hauling us down to talk about the next steps on immigration. I really don't care what he says it's about. It just, quoting, it just cannot be about what we know it's about. Unbelievable. Believable. You call John Boehner's office and say, you're done. If you don't step down, I will I will work against you day and night. You call Louis Gohmert's office and say, Louis, I will work for you 
day and night. It's time we get some people who we know we can count on. You know, I didn't know, and Pat and I were talking about this. I didn't know we could count on Ted Cruz. I hoped, but Stu and Pat and I talked every time, and we said to him on the air, Ted, if you're not who you say you are, we're going to be your worst nightmare. And he's like, I know. And we didn't realize at the time his worst nightmare is his dad. That's the best thing. And he has turned out to be who he said he would. There's not many. And more. Right. Maybe even more. I think more. Louis Gomer, we already know who he is. We, he, we've seen him battle. He, he keeps his soul. I called him last night and I said, Louis, would you be senator? Please, would you be senator? He said, you know, it's amazing. He said, I'm getting a lot of calls since you started saying this, Glenn. Can I just ask you a question? Did you pray on this before you started this ball rolling? What a great question. What a great question. And I had to say to him, you know, Senator, no, I didn't. I said, I have prayed on you before, and I know I'm supposed to support you, but you are the only one can, that can decide whether you're supposed to be senator or not. But I, I will tell you this. If you'll be senator, if you'll run, I'll do everything I can because I am sick and tired of the people like Boehner. If you had any doubt about Boehner, you know who he is today. And all of the people that run with the John Boehners of the world, the Lindsey Grahams and the, uh, and the Cornins of the world, you need to send a very clear message. Enough is enough. We win. We win if we do this. We win.